Good evening, everyone. Let us pray, then we can take our seats and just get into the word. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this particular word, for this particular time, for this particular day. Dear God, you know exactly what you need even before we do, and we thank you for everything, for settling needs that are going to come, and we thank you. So dear God, right now, please bless this word that you have given me, God, and it is a particular word for right now. And we thank you in the precious name of Jesus, we pray, amen. amen. Are we being the light? <laughs> Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word from Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine for men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Bermuda has just hosted one of the biggest musical events last week. They estimated that it was going to be between eight to 10,000 people at at least over $100 for a general admission ticket. Ultra was $500 a piece. Many found their way up to National Stadium, and they were mesmerized by the acts, sending them into much song and dance, not to mention the bright lights that shone on the stage, so patrons could see or hope, depending where they were sitting or standing, before or after the fence, to see the acts. I saw the feeds online, and I can say Church Bermuda was lighting it up. They lit it up. They lit it up. If only for one night, they lit it up. If only for a few hours, they lit it up. It's amazing what you would do to see a superstar. Some would use their rent money. They would fix, work, and crunch that budgetary money to make sure that they could have the best outfit, hair, nails could buy for somebody who really didn't see them at all. <laughs> putting themselves in debt or putting themselves deeper in debt, knowing that school starts in a few weeks, but I'm not gonna go there. Made blind by those lights, but I'm not gonna go there either. If you go to New York and go to Broadway, you see the bright lights of Broadway. That's what it's called, the bright lights. The stage performances are excellent. However, we have stars who are on the Broadway stage that sacrifice their life to be on that stage for a moment, for a minute, for a decade, but their time will be up. We see, like it or not, in Hollywood that you can become a star if you would do things that you normally wouldn't do just to taste the fame of light, the earthly fame of light, the worldly fame of light, even if it lasts for a minute, a second, an hour. Kirk Douglas is still alive at over 100 years old, but guess what, one day his time's gonna be up and his light will not shine anymore. Ephesians 5, 8 says, for ye were sometimes in darkness, but now ye are light. Hmm. With the light in the Lord, walk as children of light. I've got one more thing to say before I go into that. Locally, we have a lighthouse, Gibbs Hill Lighthouse, an iron lighthouse, a lighthouse that's still standing yeah. after a minute, a day, decades, centuries. The beam of light that hasn't gone out, only for mechanical, but it's been fixed. We make sure to fix that light. We make sure that light is working because we have to make sure that that light stays in its lane. Because if you're out there on the sea, you will hope to see a beam of light that's going to help you to get to life. The lighthouse. Are we as a lighthouse? I'll get to that a little later. It has stood the test of times. It stood through hurricanes and storms. On a foggy night, you could look out and still see it on a foggy night, even on a foggy spiritual night when you need a light, sometimes that's the light you see. But we'll get there later. It lights up. Now for the verse I just read, before we were saved, we were walking in spiritual darkness. Before we were saved, we were walking in the ways and doing of Satan. That's it. There is no other gray area. You either were or you weren't. 
This is not to make Christians puffed up or make us better than anyone. To the contrary, this is to show the world through our testimonies, our fiery trials and tribulations, where we are buffeted back and forth and up and down, that our light is still supposed to shine no matter what. Because let's face it, without Jesus, our lives will be a mess. Hmm. It's through Jesus that our light of salvation shines. So it's good because if you put a light bulb out and you see the bugs going toward the light, they're just naturally drawn to it. They don't ask about it. They just go to it. So why can't we be the same as lights going directly toward that light? Let's think about Genesis 1, 3 to 5 and see how God separated physical light by simply saying, and it was done. Let's go down to Genesis 3 and see where we find mankind's choosing to fall out of God's light of holiness and enter darkness because all was said was, you're not going to die. How contrary is that? How contrary that the darkness was speaking to the light and the light paid attention to the darkness and now we're walking in darkness until Jesus comes back. We'll get to that later. We've heard more recently about our lovely Bermuda home, our beautiful jewel of the sea, where every time in our generation you would grow up and you only really had one weekend day off because Sundays, you were always in Sunday school with your friends from school. You learned songs like, make me a sunbeam. But isn't it unfortunate today that our little children can't even go around as little lights for Jesus because they didn't even know the song? We're not teaching them to be lights. They can twerk and do everything else, but we can't teach them to be light. Lord, make them sunbeams. We know that our beautiful Bermuda is getting darker and darker. Just look, there's a parade, and it's coming to a city near us soon. However, the light will still shine regardless. As we are Christians, we must speak and put the godly light on that dark situation anyway. Or I would like to call the light a witness. Are we lights? Are we witnesses? Or are we just bystanders, as many people will be at that parade? We will be lights to speak about what God really says about these events, lifestyles, behaviors, including this parade and other parades. Let's not forget, one has ushered in another in behavior, dress, and lifestyle. It has rooted in Bermuda. On that end, we are told to, as lights, mind your business, stay in your lane. No one wants to hear from you. No one's telling me how to live my life. It's my life, and I can do what I want with my life. You're homophobic, as well as believing in that old book of yours, not realizing that that is the book of salvation that they too can join. Well, my church supports it. My church supports it. I'm just going to go and see who's who. Yeah, I'll sit at that, I'll sit at that sinful city gate. I'm not going to get caught in it. I'll just be on the outskirts, lot. What are you talking about? And the list goes on endlessly. I'm going to read the full verse of Matthew 5, 14 and 16. And it says, ye are the light, and you can read along with me, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set in a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, so that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Okay, since we're going to flip the script a little bit, let's say that there was a praise in National Stadium with 8,000 born-again, sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled, fire-baptized Christians who on that night decided not to have the lights of a stage but the light of the world, who bought their children who were just like a little sunbeam, who decided to say, Jesus, I am standing for you, 
who will lift their hands in praise and worship, and the Son will have nothing on the glory of God. That, that God separated to make the sun and the light has nothing on the glory that in heaven we won't even need the sun. His glory is just going to fill the entire place. If we decided to get together as a group, if we decided to get together as one accord as we should be, that we will have no problem going to anybody and say, would you like to know about Jesus? Because those in the pride parade are having no problem telling you that you need to understand where they're coming from and they're going to parade it up and down regardless. So why not us? Why can't we do what we need to do? Because we are called the lights. We are called, you know, we, we are taking it on as the witnesses. So why not be the witness? Why not be the light? You know, I'll say this, and Overseer Trot, you hit it right. Since becoming a Christian... There are some things I would have never thought would have happened to me, and they haven't been good. They haven't been good as far as if I did not obey. It helped to stretch me. Being a Christian does not mean that the road is ever going to be easy. That road led Jesus to Calvary. Things may happen as far as friends, family, co-workers, People who just want to put your light out because you are an irritant to their darkness. I've heard a lot recently that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. It's not easy when you find yourself lighting up the holy candle and there are those who are determined to blow it out. However, as the verse just said, don't hold your candle under a bushel. Don't witness to only us. We need to witness to everybody else. What good is a light if the only face you're going to shine it in is your own? But let us shine forth for the glory of God and spread the gospel. Matthew 5, 11 says, and you can repeat this with me. I love it. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Isn't it nice to know that we come from a God that said no matter what they decide, jail they decide to put us in, that he had the key to unleash it and let us out? I mean, really. We are blessed to be witnesses. We are blessed, actually, to be persecuted. So maybe that's not such a bad thing, because the more they persecute us, which means that we're on the right track. As we speak in our open air service tonight, we have to remember that we have to shine the light of Jesus' love. We cannot afford to ignore, bypass, or act like no one else exists. Hamilton Parish, Facebook Live, we've come to you tonight out of the love of God to let you know simply that Jesus saves. He will give you new life. He will give you new joy. He will give you new hope. He will give you a new walk. He'll give you new perspective. He'll give you forgiveness. And he will give you love. Through believing that God did send to earth his only son, that he sacrificed his son Jesus, who was beaten and whipped, to go on to a horrific death, nailed to a cross, who shed blood to save you and me to raise up from the dead three days later after he died and overcame death and Satan. Through this ultimate love, who is coming back to receive his ultimate love, to be with him in a heavenly eternity and to save you from an eternity in God's wrath of hell where your host will be forever, Satan. And torture. When you talk about the ultimate VIP ticket, take it. You didn't have to pay for it. The debt is already paid. We must carry on the mandate that we must go throughout the world and spread the gospel. That means that Hamilton Parish or anyone who's listening, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. If you're feeling that there's no more life left in you, feel free to drop on by. If you're living for the moment, live for this moment. 
we will love you into the church and hopefully we'll love you to go to Jesus. As I conclude, I am appealing again that if you do not have a church home and you're listening, we will be happy to see you and to welcome you. If you do not have your eternal home secured, we will be happy to show you the way. Jesus has the key. Jesus has everything in store that you ever asked for. Everything you ever wanted. He's waiting. Why not stop living in darkness and abide by the light of Jesus? You'll be glad you did. Blessings abound.